Hi, I'm Steve Hansen, and today we're going to be talking about how to take an image that's shot indoors in a studio look like it was shot outdoors. Okay, so today we have a campfire scene, and we're going to be discussing how to style food for a really just kind of a gorgeous s'more scene that we have going on here. And I'm gonna go through the lighting setup. We have a one by three strip light, uh, the flex light over to the left, kind of creating sort of a raking daylight look. And I'm gonna go through it piece by piece here. We, we have it coming from the left to really add kind of sort of a forward raking light to the front of the wood and all of the, the products in the front here. We've also got sort of a big print that I've created in the background. Now what this is doing is actually allowing us to create a very kind of environmental look inside a studio. You don't have to have a print this big, but it's really nice to have something that will allow you to sort of believe that you're in this area. Right now I've got a uh, Skylux that's sort of bouncing light onto the background at a 45 degree angle, so it, it doesn't reflect into the camera. So it looks really vibrant, like it's actually there in front of you. I have kind of created a white card off to the right to add fill, but I've also added sort of a, a very earth-toned green paper um, that allows the reflections from what would actually be surrounding the, the scene to come through. Because if you just have just a white card, it's gonna look like this was shot in a studio and it's gonna have sort of a very blank look. Whereas if you had it this in nature, you'd be getting all the tones from the trees and all the, the greenery and everything. So we've kicked a little bit of green back into the wood here. So what we're gonna do is start with food styling the graham crackers and the chocolate for the s'mores. So this whole scene is about roasting s'mores, sort of in a serene, natural looking area. And so we're gonna, we picked out graham crackers that were really nice looking and didn't have a lot of cracks. And the marshmallows, we just selected what we call heroes in food styling, which are like the perfect pieces. And the chocolate, that required more work because the chocolate I had had a little bloom on it. It wasn't perfect, had some dust. So what I did is I took a straw and blue on the chocolate, which not only allowed all the dust and debris to come off of it, but it sort of tamed the chocolate's look, and it just sort of made it homogenous and delicious looking. So this is, a, this is actually just wood that I picked up, and it's real wood, and we're gonna light it on fire, but to make it look like it was actually burning for a while, I took the powder from the bottom of a mesquite charcoal bag and mixed it with flour, and that actually looks just like embers. So I sort of spooned that around the wood, and we, uh, I kind of pre-lit the wood to kind of make it look like it had already burned. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take rubber cement and I'm going to just dab it exactly where I want the fire to go. Now rubber cement's perfect because it burns out really, really fast. And you don't have as much you know, hazard issues in regards to actually fire safety. But we do have you know, uh, spray, I have a lot of water in a spray bottle to tame this if it gets out of control. And I also have a fire extinguisher just in case it gets really out of control. So the, uh, the, what I've done here is I have a scene in front that looks convincing. I've got the background, which we've kind of worked to make it look convincing using different f-stops and using different uh, shutter speeds. We want it to blur out a little bit, but it's really up to your taste as far as what you want your camera settings to be. I think I'm on f8 or so, give or take. It, it's sort of a little blurry in the background, but you can still make out what it is. You don't want the actual texture to be lost. And so here I have the marshmallows on a skewer and this skewer is attached to an arm and that allows it to stay in position so that if I do end up having to composite the scene, it won't have moved at all. So now that we're ready to kind of make this image happen, we're gonna be lighting a fire under, this, under these logs and we're gonna be using a fog machine to create just a little bit of steam and a mist that would actually be coming from the waterfall we have in the background, and also just to provide a smoother transition from foreground to background. It's something to use a lot, and it really helps in the final composition. Here I have a black card. All this really is doing is making sure that there's rakiness to the light, kind of a, a bright area, a dark area, and another bright area, and this would mimic how light comes through trees in the forest. So you're, you're constantly thinking about not just your background, but what is the product seen around it, and how do I make that light appear on the front of what I'm shooting. That's a huge part of compositing. So it's not just about making the, the background and the foreground work together, it's about also interacting 
in the foreground as it would in nature. Okay, so here we have our final image, and you'll notice that all of the various components that we worked hard to make perfect have really come together in a single frame, which is fantastic. You can see the smoke and the background and everything working together, and the, really the success of this image was really dependent on these, these fantastic lights, the one by three strip light creating this raking light coming from the left, and the, light, the skylux hitting the background and creating a convincing glow in the back. Thank you.